Hey, Gary here again. Uh, this is my last demo in this series. This is where we're running HPIA again uh, in offline mode. So here you can see the unique ID was mapped to the product. And now if you if you had the taxi sequence up next to you, some of this makes a little more sense, but I'm just gonna kind of show you what's happening along the way here. All right, so now it's setting all the dev variables. So we'll go ahead and take a look now here at repo date and repo ID and repo version are all there. And if you compare that to the package, you'll see like where those fields and things are coming from. And uh, so follow along in the post and this will make sense. Uh, here you can see, so the driver stuff is actually from earlier in the process where I downloaded the driver pack and I use those, so I'm doing the almost exact same, well it is, it's the exact same process for the, the drivers offline where it's dynamically picking what it needs and uh, it mounts it, the whim to the that mount directory and then applies it. But here uh, what we're doing is the offline repo, it is setting the variables for dev, uh, here you can see the precast 001 is mapped to the variables for the offline repo ID. So we're going to move forward here and now you can see it's actually downloading that repo package MCM003E1 -E um, and it is going into our caching down to the local drive right now. Um, so this is uh, similar to the last demo other than this is all dynamic so I don't have a single step per platform. I just have these uh, a step that has all the variables in it and it detects which one it needs based upon the platform that it's running on. So it's all dynamic and then there's no direct references which is great um, if you're using this to deploy software to uh, machines after OSD because if it's directly references and you try to pre-cache it will pull down the content for all of them. Here you can see it went into the packages folder and uh, it updated the variable driver 01 and now it's downloading HPIA into its uh, HPIA tool 01 variable and now that we know where the tool is and where the offline repository is, we will run that through and use those variables to run HPA. So we're using a PowerShell script this time just to make it a little more pretty so it adds a little bit of logging here. It tells me where the repo is supposed to be, where the logging is going, where the cache there is. So this is the first time too that we're setting the cache directory where HPA is going to um, copy and extract things out of. Uh, otherwise, by default, it goes to C program data. I personally prefer it being in C temp because, like, I don't need this to be on the computer forever. So I put it in the temp area, and then eventually, if it gets cleaned out, no skin off my back. We're going to open the log. Just follow along for a moment here. All right, so in this example, too, the PowerShell script closed the TS progress bar UI and it launched its own um, progress bar, which I like because it's a little more informational. I'll show you the command line here in a second. All right, so the offline, you can see where uh, it's looking for that offline repo. Um, the non-interactive is what turns on that uh, progress bar. which I think is a nice touch. Uh, you don't have to close the progress bar UI for this to show, but oftentimes uh, that will be on top of this when it runs. So um, I just like to have everything closed when I when I run this step. So this pops up and you can see it for sure. Even, even in this demo, it kind of hides behind some of the other windows if you're not careful. Um, so that's why I just pull it down here to the left corner. All right, so it's using that offline repository. It's it is uh, copying things from that uh, package location into the temp 
uh, cache directory and expanding them in it. What I also like about uh, this process is this UI that it shows gives more information than this log because the log just says using offline repository whereas the UI actually says like what it's doing. Um, I, I wish the HPAA team would make a log that kind of follows the UI but um, I don't see that happening as a lot of development is going into their web version now to um, allow you to do a lot of the driver management through the, the web portal. So expect to hear more about that at MMS and uh, see more of that come into the WEX, HP WEX, the Workforce Experience Platform. But for now, uh, I still like using HPA because I have full control here of what I'm doing all locally and I can automate the entire process. Um, we are getting near the end. Actually, looking at this, we've got about six more minutes of install. So I am going to uh, just skip forward a little bit here. You, nobody needs to see all these installs because you've seen them if you watch the other videos. All right. And all right, and now we're almost done. I just kind of flew through about five minutes. And we are on these last installs. We should see the final exit. There we go. And now it's done with that step. Everything's been updated. And you can continue on with your task sequence. Thanks for joining.